Well, what is going on everybody and welcome to another episode of Tyler's Rural Fishing Top 5. Today we're going to be discussing, ooh, a fish just jumped, the top five pond lures. I get direct message on Instagram every single day about Tyler, what's the best bait I can use in my pond? What's the best bait I can use for dirty water? What's the best bait I can use for clear water? We're going to discuss all that in today's video so you guys can be more prepared on catching your fish in your local ponds. Let's get started. So of course, you guys live all across the country and a few of you guys even live across the world to watch my videos and so your ponds are going to be vastly different from one another. But I have picked out five lure categories that I truly believe can catch fish in almost every single pond out there. So let's start off with the most fun, top water. I'd say at least 75% of the ponds that I've been to in my life have some sort of vegetation, whether that is uh, snot grass that kind of grows up with the sun, whether that's hydrilla, milfoil, coontail, reeds, lily pads, any sort of green thing that lives in the water, that's called vegetation, and bass love to congregate around that. Now the reason is because vegetation provides oxygen, and of course fish need oxygen to breathe, just like us, they just take it in through the water, and so fish love to congregate, especially in the summertime, around heavy vegetation that can provide shade and oxygen for them to live upon. And so kind of my main category is frogs, soft, soft bodied frogs. And uh, the cool thing about these is that they are weedless. You can, now of course that one's not so weedless. But you can run your fingers across these and you're not gonna get hooked. But as soon as a fish bites it, it's gonna hook the fish. And so you wanna throw these over lily pads, into reed clumps, over hydrilla, all sorts of things. And uh, as this bird is saying, he agrees. You guys can catch some giant fish in your pond on frogs. Now, for you guys who don't have any sort of vegetation or structure in your ponds, my favorite bait of all time to use in a pond is the Zara Spook. This is the Super Spook Junior. I just think it imitates a more lifelike size of, of shad or bait fish that lives in your local pond. So that is the, uh, the top water section. Now let's move below the water and talk about moving baits. So there's kind of two categories, or really one category of, of moving baits. There's hard baits. Now I'm going to split that into crankbaits and bladed baits, such as uh, spinner baits and buzz baits. So kind of the two main crankbaits that I throw in ponds, uh, because ponds are mostly shallow, if they were a deep pond, I might throw a deep crank, such as a, a Series 5 or a 5XD, but for most of you guys that have pretty shallow ponds that are most often dirty, I'm going to throw a rattle trap or a square bill. And so kind of the two square bills that I love to throw are both six cents. I know uh, Strike King and Rattletrap both make great square bills as well, but I've used six cents for a few years now and I absolutely love them. This is the L7. It dives through about seven feet and has an incredible action, imitates a, you know, a larger bait fish. And this is the Crush 50X and imitates just your standard bluegill uh, and your standard small minnow. And so those are great for you know, throwing around wood, around shallow cover and bouncing it off because that square bill allows it to bounce off and reflect off of cover. Now, the other bait that I love to throw, especially during the shad spawn, which happens, you know, usually a month after the bass start spawning, uh, or during the pre-spawn, when those bass are feeding up to go to the spawn, if I wouldn't hook myself, is a rattle trap or a lipless crankbait. Now, these baits are incredible and they're so versatile. You can fish them slow, you can fish them fast, you can yo-yo them, you can basically drag them across the bottom. They are very, very versatile hard baits. And of course, they have treble hooks, so they're most likely gonna hook any fish that bites. And so, those are kind of the two hard bait categories that I like to talk about. Now, let's go into bladed baits. So, if any of you guys have ever watched one of Andrew Flair's videos, I'm sure you have, you've more than likely seen him throw a chatterbait. And he throws a, he throws a chatterbait in practically every single one of his videos. And the reason for that is because they work. Now, chatterbaits are incredible at imitating all sorts of different kinds of forage that bass feed on. They can imitate bluegill, such as this green pumpkin chatterbait, or shad, such as the shad and chartreuse chatterbait. Now, what makes these baits so cool is that they're different from a crankbait and a spinnerbait, which we'll talk about in a second, because they have the blade that is disconnected from the head and from the hook. That means this bait is almost you know, almost perfectly weedless unless you're throwing around big stick ups uh, or big reeds. And so these are incredible baits to catch big bass because they have a big profile. Now, in case you guys are fishing reeds or heavy, heavy cover, uh, or there's a lot of shad or a lot of wind, there's a lot of variables that I'm throwing at you guys right now. And of course, if you have questions, shoot them down below. But spinner baits, oops, spinner baits are another awesome way to catch those pond fish. I guarantee you, if you go to somebody's farm pond and throw a spinnerbait, you will have an awesome day. They are probably, I'd say this in a Berkeley power worm is probably the most, uh, the lure that's caught the most fish over the history of bass fishing. 
Um, and that is because they just imitate so many different things. It can be bluegill, shad, a red one can do crawfish. There's all sorts of different things that these baits can imitate and they are great for catching, especially pond bass. So now that we have the two uh, moving baits out of the way, let's move on to two soft plastic categories that I think really encapsulate everything uh, that embodies a pond, and that is Cinco's and Flukes. Now Cinco's, we all know these catch fish, but none of us really know why. No one can quite explain why a fish wants to eat something that looks like, I mean, a, a green french fry, a, a green stick, I don't know, a worm of some kind. Honestly, I have no clue what a Cinco resembles. If you guys have uh, green worms at your house, at, at your pond, let me know, and that way I can know why we throw Cinco's. But these baits just work incredibly well. I can't explain it, but they just do. And the Cinco that I like to use is the v &M Chopstick, the five inch chopstick. This thing has an incredible action. It is just as soft as any other brands out there. And in my opinion, it's durable than that brand that everybody else throws. And so the way that I like to throw a Cinco is, I'll have a video coming out with this within the next few weeks, is the top five ways to fish a Cinco, but I'll kind of go through them real quickly right here. In ponds, I most often throw them on a Texas or a wacky rig. I don't go into the Carolina or the, the deep shaky head, anything like that. I just throw it on a, you know, a three or four aught Gamagatsu wide gap hook. Uh, either weighted, weightless or weighted with a small tungsten weight uh, or I go wacky style and I just stick the hook right through the middle and cast it out there and those are two great ways uh, to fish a Cinco. Now one other bait that I believe has kind of fallen by the wayside and I was kind of happy about it for a while because it let me catch more fish on it than anybody else is the fluke. I think everybody got so caught up in the the, the craws and the, the Cinco's and all sorts of other things that nobody's really talked about the fluke lately and so you guys are my viewers you're gonna get a sneak peek into how, how good the Fluke actually is. Now, the Fluke is a, is a bait made by Zoom, and other companies make them as well, but this is just the, the traditional one. And this color here is Mardi Gras. It really imitates bluegill. And this color is the white ice that imitates any sort of shadow bait fish that you guys have in your ponds. Now, the reason these baits work so well uh, is because of the way they're built. They're built to look like a bait fish or a bluegill. And so the way I love to rig them is with a, uh, usually an owner or a gamagatsu, a wide gap hook, usually belly weighted. That way it gives, it gives the fluke a nice shimmy on the way down. These baits are great for casting and twitching around shallow cover. Uh, I love skipping flukes under docks. I almost like skipping flukes under docks more than I do Cinco's, and that's saying a lot, because I love Cinco's. And so you guys really want to make sure you take advantage of flukes, especially during the summertime when those shad are spawning and those fish are coming up to feed on the spawning shad and the spawning bluegill as well. Flukes are incredible baits to use for that. So that is it for the top five pond baits. If you guys have any more questions, uh, shoot them down in the comment section below. I know that I didn't address you know, every single type of bait you guys can fish in your ponds. You can go bigger and throw swim baits. You can go smaller and throw drop shots or anywhere in between. But I just kind of went with the top five baits that I think you can catch fish on on any pond in America and probably any pond in the world. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you click up my last top five baits right over here and be looking forward to top five ways to fish a Cinco next time we meet. Now, if you guys like this channel, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and like button. Leave a comment, let me know what you guys think, and we'll see you guys next time.